Hi guys, Anne from UK Fountain Pens here to give you a tour of these two pens from Herner Müller. Um, apologies for my German pronunciation. If you don't know Herner Müller, and I didn't, uh, they make paper. Uh, they have paper mills in Germany and they've been doing that for about 450 years. Um, fine art paper, now uh, inkjet paper for digital photography, and for a long time also scientific and medical filtration paper. They make paper. Um, in the art world, well known as a premium drop brand. Not known here in the world of stationery and pens. But here we are with a new set called Fine Notes. This is a, a portfolio which includes a couple of pens. There's also a um, limited edition, first edition. Uh, the pens are available as ballpoints and rollables, but obviously I only care here about the fountain pens. Along with those, there's two new ranges of notebooks, premium notebooks ranging from about 70 to 125 pounds. So this is high end stuff. But how do they work as pens and where on earth did this come from? Um, I had a, a long call with the, the guy who heads up both uh, the UK operations for Hannah Muller and the Fine Notes uh, business and got some really good insights. So I'll share a few of these as we as we go along. The first is that this is not a, a spur of the moment thing for Hannah Muller. They've started up this fourth business unit and um, they brought in a guy who's um, spent a lot of time in the pen industry working in places like Lamy uh, and they are taking it seriously. Uh, they also know that making pens is is not the same as making paper and so these are produced by subcontractors and they use Jovo Gold number no. 5 nibs and I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, you don't just go in and uh, make pens yourself uh, in your first year and, and that just doesn't happen. So um, the other question is why such far, uh, high end pens like these these pens retail for about 400 pounds um they have gold nibs why would you start that and this didn't make a great deal of sense to me until Hannah Muller explained that um they started with the idea of making the best writing notebook in the world and they have historically made writing paper uh, and so they were talking to bookbinders they invented a new type of paper to uh, work really well with um writing ink and suddenly, oh, okay, well, you're not going to make a £50 uh, steel nibbed pen to go with the best writing notebook in the world. Um, so suddenly it, it makes a great deal of sense. And that's the path they, they go down uh, in all of their business lines. So they have um, uh, two pens. They're not looking to go huge range of volume uh, in terms of sales. The, they, they're aiming high end. They have 30 year warranties. They come in a very nice wooden box. Uh, they're being sold from a, a, their own site, but also a limited range of retailers, uh, starting with, with art stores where they ha currently have distribution. Um, they're looking to sell to people who know Hannah Muller, but also maybe enthusiasts like me who are curious about new brands and seeing, uh, seeing what's different. Um, the two pens, one is called Slim and one is called Bold. The, the bold one is made from matte stainless steel with, with laser engraving, uh, an articulated clip, and this kind of quite interesting curving section. Uh, it's called the bold, but you know, it's as pens go, uh, it, it's not that huge. Um, the section is still quite slim. The nib is small. Both pens use the same nib, and this is uh, a design consideration um, to make the manufacturing process easier uh, and service and spares and all of that stuff so i personally would like this to have a larger nib but um it actually performs uh oh, except it dried out a little bit uh amazingly well um i've also forgotten how to write it seems the nib is great it has a bit of softness the flow is excellent um it's all good it's a cartridge converter the barrel screws off the cap screws on in less than a there you go just a little over three quarters of a turn um it seals well doesn't dry out and it's a super tough stout little thing um re really high quality construction really finished actually it reminded me of the Stadler Lignum um that I reviewed a while back which is in terms of the sort of simplicity and and stoutness of it I'm not particularly wedded to the laser engraved Henne Muller name around the cap here. Um, at least it's subtle in terms of colour, but it's um, it does stand out. The second pen, um, 
is the slim and this is this reminds me much more of of some of the slimmer otto hoots the um you know, guilloche in this kind of blue steel color very attractive it has to the machined clip this one doesn't articulate so much and this is a pull cap um what leaps out to me here is the um uh, mechanically engraved uh, rooster outline on the section and the Hennemuller name um, engraved around the base of the section. The section here is like less than eight millimeters across. This is a very, very small pen. Um, put it against something like a Graph Classic here, and you can see that it is smaller in, in every respect. It is really tiny. Um, actually, and it's also also light. This is, a, this is an aluminium pen. Um, it, because it's so light, it's, even the barrel step is not uncomfortable, and again, the nib writes amazingly well. Um, it doesn't dry out. It feels, again, very stout, very solid. Everything fits together. Um, there are some... Uh, I, I challenged Hannah Muller on stuff like, well, why is the clip on this one rounded, the clip on this one square? Why is this one flat-ended, this one dome-ended? If you're trying to build recognition, you want your pens to look like they come from part of a family. Um, they, I wasn't entirely satisfied with the answer that this is about having ranges that suit different people, like this is a sort of Bauhaus, I'm an architect kind of pen, this is the I'm a bit more fashionable and I keep it in my handbag kind of pen. Um, I, I still think we, we could go for something that's a, a, a little bit closer, maybe share the same clip at least. Um, as as pens, I, I think they, they write beautifully, which is important. They're very well built. I think they look nice. Um, my my pick is for the bold. I like the curvaceous section. I think Hannah Muller will have a struggle with trying to sell pens like these at £430 or so um, when you could, for that same price, go out and buy a, a Graph or you could go and buy a Mont Blanc 146 which, or a Pelican M800, which has much more uh, brand recognition in the writing space. Um, I think this will appeal to people who are familiar with the premium Henna Muller brand. And certainly the first reactions I got on Instagram were, oh, I, I use their paper. It's great stuff. Um, there, is, there is a market out there for, for Henna Muller's ambitions for these pens. Looking at them in their own right, uh, they are a really great first entry into this space. Um, and I do think that even though there's only two pens in the portfolio, they are sufficiently different that one one of them will appeal to you um, and one of them probably won't. The next steps, um, I talked about, well, what's what's next for, for Henna Muller? Um, they obviously, I asked them about limited editions. That's absolutely uh, on, on their roadmap. Um, packages of their notebooks, maybe some some inks and a pen, drawing on their limited, uh, their long, long history to do a, a, a limited edition, much as Lamy has done with its, you know, Bauhaus versions. Um, I, I think there's good stuff to come from Henna Muller. Uh, look out for a review of the, the paper and the notebooks. I didn't get the fanciest notebook, but I do have a couple of the £70-ish versions. The paper is is very good, very interesting stuff, so look out for a review of that soon. Thanks very much. Have a good one.